Some people in my neighborhood won't ever do right. They drink whiskey all day and raise hell all night. I'm going back to... Hello again, watch friends. Welcome back. Something a little different today. A quick take on Scotch whiskey. I know what you're thinking. What does this guy know about single malt scotch? Well, let me say a couple of things. Many of us have multiple hobbies. I know for a fact that in addition to our passion for watches and watch collecting, some of us also enjoy a good cigar now and then. And some of us also occasionally enjoy a wee dram or two. So the question at hand, I know what I like, I have an open mind and like to try new whiskey, be they single malt, bourbon, rye, or whatever. And I like to share a few of my favorites, both in person and virtually. One more thing. I'm not one of those people who has a super duper nose. You will never hear me utter the words when tasting a dram. This reminds me of Christmas morning at Granny's. Or, the whiskey smells like a spring afternoon in a mountain meadow after a light rainstorm. No, you won't hear me say those things. What I might say are things that are more objective impressions. Granted, they're subjective, but they're at least rooted in my experience. For example, I smell chocolate, or vanilla, or sassafras, or whatever. The more you learn about whiskey, and taste, and smell whiskey, the more experienced your nose becomes, and the better you can appreciate the complexities of a particular bottling. As you probably know, our sense of smell accounts for some 80%, not sure the exact percentage here, of our taste experience of the foods we eat and the liquids we drink. That's why, with experience, you can sense, smell or taste, the complexities of what you're drinking. Like wine, the single malt whiskey experience is usually discussed relative to the nose, what it smells like, often called nosing, the palate, what it tastes like, often referred to as on the tongue, and the finish, how the taste lingers after you swallow. Now, just a wee background for the newbies and a review for the old timers like me. Whiskey can be made from corn, barley, rye, and other grains. Bourbon is American whiskey that's been made from a minimum of 51% corn with rye and malted barley. Since 1964, by American law, bourbon can be made anywhere in the United States, not just in Kentucky. Bourbon spirit is always matured in fresh oak casks, which are charred on the inside to yield more flavor. Rye is made in the same way as bourbon, but is made up of 51% rye, hence the name. Often, rye whiskeys tend to be a little spicier than bourbons. Single malt scotch. By law, all scotch whiskey must be matured for at least three years, but most single malts mature for eight to 15 years or longer. Also by Scottish law, the final bottled product must be a minimum of 40% alcohol by volume to be called single malt scotch whiskey. Since alcohol is a vehicle for flavor, many single malt whiskeys are bottled at a higher ABV, 41, 43, 46%, or even higher. These high strength whiskeys are more complex in taste and often have subtle flavor notes. You can always add a little water to reduce the al alcoholic strength. This also has the benefit of opening up the spirit, but you get to choose if and how much water you want to add. The term single malt scotch whiskey means that the spirit is made from malted barley, bottled from casks from one and only one distillery, 
And unlike wine, whiskey does not mature further once it's been bottled. Blends are a combination of grain whiskeys, could be any grain, usually 60 to 80 percent grain whiskeys with maybe 20 to 40 percent malt whiskeys. Once blended, these whiskeys are then left to marry, and that's in quotes, to marry in casks for some period of time before being bottled. Briefly, the single malt Scotch whiskey making process consists of six steps. Before I mention the steps, let me just talk about the ingredients. There's just three, water, barley, and yeast. Barley is soaked for two to three days in warm water to start germination. This process is called malting and it allows the starch in the barley to be converted into soluble sugars to make the alcohol. After about seven days, the soaked barley is spread on the floor to germinate. And when it started to shoot, the germination has to be stopped by drying it in a kiln. Sometimes peat is added to the kiln to import flavor from the smoke. The barley is now called malt, which is then ground down in a mill. The ground malt is now added to a large vessel called a mash tun and stirred for several hours to begin the extraction of the soluble sugars. The liquid combination of malt and water is called the mash. During each of three stages, the water temperature is increased to almost boiling. The sugars in the malt dissolve and these are drawn off to the bottom of the mash tun, which yields the resulting liquid called wort. This process is normally carried out three times, but only wort from the first two times is used while the third lot is put into the next batch. The spent grains are used for animal feed. Now the yeast is added after the wort has first been cooled and passed into large tanks. This begins fermentation as the yeast feeds on the sugars and turns it into alcohol. The fermentation normally takes a minimum of two days, but can go longer to instill further flavor characteristics. The liquid at this stage is called the wash, and has an alcohol strength of between 6 to 10 percent ABV, like beer or ale. In fact, you could make beer from this liquid if the next step was brewing rather than distilling. The wash is traditionally distilled twice in Scotland in copper stills, which have been found to be the best material for extracting impurities from the spirit. Most stills are bowl-shaped at the bottom, with a gradually thinner neck at the top. Different still shapes will give a different flavor and character to the final spirit. Taller stills, with longer necks, will give finer, lighter spirits, while shorter, fatter stills will produce a fuller, richer spirit. First, the wash enters the large wash still to separate the alcohol from the yeast, water, and grain residue. These solids are also used for animal feed. Next, the wash goes into the spirit still, where the liquid is heated so as to vaporize it, and when it reaches the neck, condenses. The liquid is called low wines and is passed to a second smaller still called the spirit still. In this still, the alcohol produced is split into three. The beginning and end portions are then mixed with the next batch of low wines and redistilled. Only the alcohol from the middle or heart of the distillation is used and this has an alcoholic strength of 65 to 70 percent ABV. Aging. Single malt whiskey must be aged in fresh, that is new, ex-bourbon oak casks for a minimum of three years. Once the casks are used, they cannot be reused for single malt scotch whiskey. 
During maturation, the flavors of the spirit combine with the natural com compounds in the wood to give the whiskey its own characteristic flavor and aroma. Not just cask wood type influences the whiskey. Also, temperature, air quality, and humidity impact the whiskey because wood is porous and will breathe in the air. During each year of maturation, about 2% of the spirit is lost through natural evaporation. This is called the angel share and explains why older whiskies are less readily available and often more expensive to buy. Speaking of angel share, there is an excellent independent Scottish movie by that name. It's won the Con Award and it's a great story that just happens to be single malt whiskey related. Just a brief word on bottling. Single cask, as it sounds, comes from only one cask. The bottle of whiskey, single malt whiskey, is usually labeled with the cask number, batch, and date. Single malt, a particular version of single malt Scotch whiskey from one distillery. However, the bottle contents can contain a mixture of several casks of the same age and type of spirit. Independent bottling is whiskey that's bottled by a company other than the distillery. So to summarize, single malt Scotch whiskey is not made by distilling, it's really made in the oak barrels. What comes out of the still, that clear liquid, is called new make spirit. It becomes whiskey only after some period of time aging usually in used American oak barrels. The single malt scotch can often be finished the last couple of years in other types of casks, such as sherry casks or wine casks. This technique imparts additional flavor characteristics to the whiskey. Here are a few single malts that I like. Glenmorangie 10 year old, the original. Glenmorangie Original is a very approachable, light, fruity single malt scotch. It's readily available, relatively inexpensive, and is a great starting point for a new whiskey drinker. It's described as having floral notes with hints of vanilla and cinnamon. Not a complex whiskey, but a very smooth and undemanding scotch. It's my house single malt and the one I always recommend as a starting point. It's bottled at 43% ABV. Glen Fittick, 12 year old. The Fittick 12 year old is also an approachable malt, but a little more complex than the Glenmorangie. It's a little bit more expensive, a little more challenging. You'll find more flavor notes if you seek them out. The Fittick 2 is smooth and delightful. You may notice some toffee, caramel, and vanilla flavors. The 12 year old Glenfiddich is bottled at 40% ABV. Staying in the 12 year old range, I like two others that are a little bit of a speciality. Glenmorangie La Santa is a 12 year old malt with the last two years having the spirit being aged in sherry casks. This gives it more character and flavor. It's really quite nice. Bottled at 43% ABV. Another is Glenfiddich IPA cask. This is one of the Glenfiddich yearly experimental malts, and I believe it was the first one two or three years ago. Also a 12 year old, which is finished in IPA beer casks for a very interesting and smooth dram. I like this one a lot. Bottled at 43% ABV. Now, if you want to step it up, Try Bal Blair 2003. This is not an age statement, for example, 12 year old, 15 year old, etc., but a vintage. Bal Blair uses this nomenclature for all of their bottlings. This was distilled in 2003, hence the name, and bottled in 2015. So it's a 12 year old single malt. Very smooth, complex, 
and really one of the best malts I've tasted. Not that expensive, maybe half again as much as the Glen Morangy 10 year old. I highly recommend the Blair 2003. It's been bottled at 46% ABV. And I'll mention one last specialty of sorts, single malt. Balveni 12 year old single cask. This is the most complex of the ones I've mentioned, but not undrinkable by any means. In fact, it's very drinkable. I'm sipping one right now. It's easy to find and with a price about double the Glenmorin G10. Even though it's complex, it's very smooth on the nose, on the tongue, and has a wonderful finish. I wouldn't try this one straight away if you're a newbie, but work up to it. You'll be glad you did. It's bottled at 47.8% ABV. The experienced malt head will notice that all the ones I've mentioned, the ones I like, are not the peaty, smoky, or medicinal varieties. That's because I don't like those. Nothing wrong with them, and there are some good ones, but I have little experience with them, so cannot comment reliably. Some final thoughts. I'm no whiskey expert, but I know what I like. And I like to continually learn about single malt whiskey. Also, I have an open mind. So once I learn about a new brand or new bottling, I want to try it. Now, if you want to learn more about whiskey and hear reviews, I cannot recommend highly enough Ralphie. He's Ralphie.com on YouTube, and he has over 700 whiskey review videos. They're mainly about single malt Scotch whiskey, but also about bourbon and other spirits, and occasional overviews, explanations, and think pieces. Watching Ralphie over the last couple of years, who I believe is a Scottish undertaker by trade, is like taking a master class in whiskey. He does these reviews as a hobby and he's one of the most knowledgeable whiskey authorities on the internet. Like single malt whiskey, Ralphie may be an acquired taste, but again, if you give him time and with an open mind, I think you'll be rewarded with not just some whiskey-related enjoyment, but some valid whiskey knowledge and some actionable recommendations. Ralphie turned me on to Bal Blair, Balveni, Eagle Rare, that's a bourbon, just to name a few whiskeys that are now some of my favorites. I don't normally do this, but here is a snippet or two of one of his videos in which he provides some insights and whiskey knowledge. His integrity and knowledge are clearly apparent. I'll put a link to his channel in the description. They're generic, caramel-loaded, low-strength branding. You see, oh, excuse me a minute, bottle hug. One of the important things I have to be is consistent with my honesty. And I know that there's plenty of times that experienced, particular experienced malt mates, can say, hey, Ralphie, I think you've called wrong in that. Um, and fair enough, fair dues. There's a number of reasons. One, that I have called wrong in it. Two, that it's a whole different bottle from a different batch, and it actually dis tastes distinctly different. Simply because a whiskey has the same label as another bottle does not mean it is the same single malt experience of smell and taste. That's a fact. That really is a fact. And nobody can deny it. And thirdly, um, our diet, our climate... Our, our condition of our health, the, the size of our nose, the sensitivity of our palate, all these factors influence the subjectivity of our senses. So an opinion, malt mates, is an opinion, is an opinion. And I know I'm speaking for all onlineers when I say this, that nobody online is really presenting themselves as a conventional orthodox whiskey expert um, when they are in fact a blogger or a vlogger 
they're simply enthusiasts giving an opinion. And it should always be treated and, and taken as such. And the real value is when you scan a number of these online vloggers and bloggers and reviewers and then you cross-check opinions and perspectives on particular single malts or bourbons or rums or whatever and then you start to build up a fuller picture which is a much more accurate guide map for your own route through the world of spirits from around the world. There you go. Now you know. No, I don't think so. Single malts, smells and taste should definitively be your own experience when you're smelling and you're tasting your malts or your rums or your bourbons or whatever you are tasting. That's important. That much more rapidly than large casks. It's the way it goes. So here we have the large capacity vessels, the um, the ton, they call it a ton, but you could call it a, basically a butt as well. Uh, and you're looking at, now this is in gallons by the way, um, but you're talking about 650 litres essentially. But there's 256 gallons, big, big containers. If you're ever in a warehouse and one of these big giant casks falls off the forklift truck and starts rolling towards you, take it free me malt mates. Don't try to stop it. Don't get in its way, dive for cover, because these large casks are so heavy, with so much momentum, they will go over the top of you and squash you like a bug. Ralphie sure seems like the kind of guy you'd like to have as a friend, to have an occasional dram or two. Lastly, if you are new to Scotch whiskey, try one of the easily obtainable, inexpensive and approachable brands such as Glen Morangy 10 year old or Glen Biddick 12 year old. You may be surprised that you actually like it. And if you're an occasional fan, step up to Bal Blair, Balvenny, and even Glen Caddam. There are dozens, if not hundreds, of choices which are limited only by your regional distributors and your budget. And, by the way, I've been talking about quality whiskey here, the kind you sip not chug, and for the most part, not the kind you mix with Coke, tonic, or other beverage. There are plenty of blends that can be used for that. Cheers. If you want to be alerted of new content when it's uploaded, kindly hit the subscribe button. I'd be honored if you did. I'm Art Lamberger, and this is my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.